Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's webinar. Um, just so that I know before we get started that you can hear me okay. Um, to the top of your, sorry, to the right of your screen um, is our chat window. If you wouldn't mind just posting in there for me, just so that I know you can hear me, please, that would be fantastic. And I know I've got, Hayley, yeah, we've got Michelle, thank you. Uh, and I know Hayley from our team is sitting in the background as well. So fantastic. So we'll get, we'll get started then. Um, welcome to our session this afternoon. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm going to be your host uh, for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Uh, and I'm really pleased that I'm joined on the call this afternoon by Michelle Johnston. Michelle is from our foundation learning team. Uh, and Michelle is going to tell us a little bit more about uh, our foundation learning department uh, in a few moments time. Um, we're running these webinars uh, because we would, love to have you come and visit us at the college we would love to be doing this as a normal open event where you get to come in uh, and look around the facilities and speak to our staff but unfortunately at the moment uh, we're not able to do that um, but you know when we speak to people that do come to our events they tell us that there are two things that they really value about coming in one is the chance to have a look around like I say, I can't really do that bit at the moment, although we have got some brilliant 360 degree photos on our website for you to have a look at. Uh, the other is the opportunity to speak to our staff. Uh, and that's the bit that I can help you with this afternoon. Uh, and so it's brilliant that Michelle has been able to join us uh, today. That chat window to the right hand side, um, if you've got any questions at all uh, as we're making our way through uh, this session, then please pop those into the chat window uh, and then we can make sure that we answer those for you. Uh, and Hayley is looking after you in the chat this afternoon, but obviously Michelle and I can pick up on some of your questions as well. Uh, so uh, just uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. On the right hand side of your screen as well, at the top, uh, you'll see there there's a tab that says polls. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind clicking on that for me, please. Uh, and it would just really help us this afternoon uh, to know who we've got uh, on the session. Uh, so if you could just let us know whether you've already applied or, or you haven't yet applied and you're here to find out more. OK, so um, yeah, I see we, we haven't got answers from everybody there yet, but Michelle, we, we have got a mix today. Take some notes, but make sure that you've got the info that you really need to make that decision about what you want to do in September. And if you're really not sure what you want to do, then you're not the only person. There are lots of people every year that we see, it won't be any different the current year under these current circumstances, who really don't know what they want to do. There might be even some of you who are thinking you really don't know what to do because you see what's going on in the world and you're not quite sure what job prospects there may be. By the time you finish your programme, the world will be a different place again and there will be many more opportunities then that may not exist now. So talk to our staff about it. And also don't be frightened if you don't know what you want to do. Have a look at some of our other sessions. Come into other sessions and see. What's really important, and one thing I say to everybody who comes into the college, you must feel comfortable with the people that you're going to be sharing your next few months and years with. And I want you to feel comfortable that you're going to be able to flourish and thrive as a person not just study a qualification, but flourish and thrive as a person with those people you talk to. So if you don't get any of the answers that you think you need in the virtual session, we've got a brilliant team on our course inquiries and we've got a brilliant team in our careers uh, office who will help you navigate 
the language, what options there are, and for you, what's the right thing to do, um, which is a question we often get asked every year. I hope you enjoy your session, and I really, really hope that I get to see you very, very soon at the college, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you with us in September, if not in person, virtually, that's for sure. Good luck. OK, well, thank you to Simon for recording that for us. Uh, and I'm just going to pull up your slides, Michelle, if you could bear with me a second just while I activate your microphone. OK, that's brilliant, Michelle. You're on. Yeah, so Michelle, um, obviously we've got your presentation slides. Did you want to take us through those and, and then we'll we'll pick up any questions that come through in the chat? Yeah, hi. So my name is Michelle Johnston and I'm the Head of Department for Foundation Learning and the ESOL team, actually. Um, within the department here, we have seven, um, probably nearly enough, eight now, because I've just recruited experienced tutors who work across site, Maidstone and Medway. Um, and we are working very closely with you as parents, carers and advisors um, and careers to help you gain the best that you can for your students and, you, and your um, children um, who are going to come into the adult world of the college to try and pros prosper to gain a good education for going forward. Um, we have many different pathways here at Mid Kent. Uh, construction is very, very popular, multi-trades, hair and beauty, business and admin, health and social care. Um, we didn't do animal care last year, but we are doing it this year. Um, hospitality and catering and um, a biggie on personal and social skills, because obviously um, students really need to learn those sort of skills uh, for going forward into the world of work. Um, we have lots of um, different classrooms that are set up individually for um, students who are doing particular courses. So we have a classroom that's, um, that caters for patron students and they go into the department as well. So they, go, they have the use of the kitchens. Um, we have um, the hair and beauty salon. Um, and again, we have our own um, nail bar up at... Um, the uh, Mid, uh, Medway campus um, and they do a lot of gardening as well and a lot of students find that really uh, rewarding to see you know that they've grown something they learn the culture of um, gardening and then they use that um, going forward. Um, we do do uh, a lot of students um, are going on to do work experience again this year now, that might be through action um, projects due to COVID, we don't know. Um, but if we are allowed to go back out into the workplace, we do have a designated um, work placement coordinator, especially uh, designated to our team, who will help um, students find work placement um, and will help them and, and work with them to get the hours in that they need to get in. Um, and also um, the uh, tutor that does that for me, is a minibus driver. So we're, we're quite lucky that we've got a minibus driver designated to our team um, to get them out and about um, into these um, workshops or work employment, you know, if we, if we are able to get out into the, um, that area. Um, many of our students um, go on to progress to level one. Um, so they have a pathway within my department where they can um, go to see how they like um, the mainstream um, delivery. So again, they'll go into uh, catering, might be hair and beauty, might be construction, might be the business and admin department. Um, and we find that the transition from us to mainstream is very smooth. Some students may choose to go to an apprenticeship um, but again, that may be very difficult this year, um, you know, with what's going on. Um, so the progression routes that the students have, you know, is, is phenomenal, really, with what we have to progress them from 
foundation into mainstream level one. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I'd like to ask. Um, you mentioned uh, obviously the, the, the different pathways that are available to our foundation students, and you know it's great to hear that those progression routes are there. If if I chose to start on a, or I was on a particular pathway in foundation, am I able to change the, change my route of study when I move into level one, or do I stay with that chosen pathway all the way through? No, what we, t we tend to do is when the student um, enrolls with us, we uh, within the six weeks of the um, induction, we you know they choose a they choose a pathway that they want to go on. But within that six weeks, they might feel that catering is not for them, and they might want to go to construction or they might want to go to hair and uh, hair and beauty. So we get them changed in that first six weeks. But when they have finished that. Um, pathway within foundation learning they may decide to then change again going into level one um, so it just gives them another avenue um, for them to go into on mainstream um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they because they've done catering for instance in foundation that they need to do they need have to do catering it, it helps i'll be honest it does help because obviously we've given them the ground skills to go into level one but it doesn't stop them from deciding you know I've done something, but I want to change it going forward. You know, they're able to do so, that. I mean, it, it sounds like, a, you know, our focus right when they come into foundation learning uh, all the way through to when students progress uh, up into level one and beyond. Our focus is always on making sure they're on the right program that will help them get to where they want to be in their, in, in their career and life. Absolutely. You know, what we want is for the students to grow and be confident at the end of their program with us to do whatever they feel they'd like to do. And all we ask them to do is to put the, the time and the effort in to gain what they need to gain on their study program to move forward. And that's, you know, and anything is possible in our department because, you know, it's it's at the, the base of their starting of what they really want to do, you know, in a career. So, you know, the world's their oyster really with what they what they can do. And I, I... I think that that opportunity to go and do some work experience uh, as part of the program is is about giving students the opportunity to develop those skills for work. Uh, I mean, you, you've mentioned that students go out to, to lots of different places for that work experience. Have you got any, any sort of examples off the top of your head of the kind of places that students have been to? Yeah, we've had we've had quite a few before lockdown. I mean, we've had students going out um, and doing action projects on the allotments and some of them have been able to get um, not on building sites because obviously we they haven't got the right uh, regulations and the right uh, qualif um, safety qualifications to do that but they might go out and do some painting I mean when we had some students that went out and did um, a painting uh, work experience project at uh, Howlett's um, had students at Nando's, we've had students in hair and beauty salons, um, we've had some in charity shops to get some um, communication experience. You know, whatever the student wants to do, if they're able to communicate and try and, you know, help, you know, work with the worker placement coordinator within the team, then I'd, I think these students are able to do anything, to be honest. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and you know when we're talking about employers and the kind of skills that, that they're normally looking for english and maths usually feature in that that list as well so how does english and maths work for our foundation learners okay so this year going forward we are very fortunate that we are going to have our own uh, maths and english lecturer um within it who is dedicated to our team which is for me as a head of department fantastic news um they'll do two uh they'll do two one and a half hours of English and two one and a half hours of maths a week separate um, and that allows them to gain up to um, entry three functional skills or you know if they're able then they can do a level one um, GCS they can do a GCSE qualification or a level one functional skills so you know they may come in say for instance at a lower level 
and then we've we can assess them within three months and if they if they're if they're capable we, we will put them into a higher group doesn't mean to say that they've come into foundation learning that's where they're going to stay no, oh, that's fantastic. And um, one one more question from me, and then then we'll see if we've got anything in the chat. Which is, um, you know, are there any other opportunities that we have for our foundation students that you'd like to tell us about? I mean, you you mentioned um, the the that gardening, for example, was a fantastic thing that that students really love to get involved in. So, how do they get involved in in that kind of thing while they're at the college? Okay, so this year again, um, I've got two allotments. I've got one on each site. Um, and uh, we've got tutors that are willing to give up their time to help those allotments to get up and running and to grow, um, hopefully, if the weather um, is kind to us, to grow what we need to grow. And we're going to produce that um, food, uh, potatoes and that, and use it in our um, McLeod's and the other restaurant at Maidstone. But also... Um, this year we are doing what we call a team teach so for students that are going to mainstream for the three hours a week um so if, for instance for an example if they choose catering they will be going to catering the catering department in mainstream for three hours a week um which i since i've been head of department i found that that can be a very daunting experience for a student that's usually foundation learning so to allow them to go over to mainstream for that time um one of my tutors will go over with that group so the, the student is familiar with the lecturer the student is familiar with being having a good rapport with that tutor from from my area but it doesn't stop them going over to mainstream to get their um practical experience from the tutors really that really, you know, that really know their career moves that they're, they're trying to move forward. So they're getting the best of both worlds. So that is something I'm really excited about this year. Um, also, as well, um, on both sites, I have um, a designated personal tutor um, to my area. So any students that's coming in, you know, feels a bit apprehensive, might have a little bit of anxiety. There might be some problems, you know, that they want to discuss, you know, with with somebody that they can have a rapport with. Then I've got a person. I've got we've got personal development tutors on both sides, and they again are, des are designated to my team. That's fantastic. Um, I've, I've got one question that's come through on the chat, uh, Michelle, if that's okay. Um, which is, can I do different units on the foundation education program, i.e., some in hair, some in hospitality, or can I only choose one subject area? And um, we have tried that in the past. It's very difficult to do that because although foundation is a lower level to main curriculum, I still want to make it beneficial to the students and that they get a qualification at the end of it. So it, it is one it is one pathway with their maths and English. Um, it would be too difficult to do different pathways. But then if you decide to do one pathway or one qualification with us, then that's where it, where you said could it, could they go another pathway or another qualification on level one? Then the answer they'd get the other one there, but it, it'd be too difficult. Yeah, so the, I mean the advantage of that, as you say, is that someone can complete their their time with foundation education and they'll finish with a, a formal qualification uh, under their belt as well. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. Right, what I'm going to do, Michelle, we, we've covered all the questions that have come through in the chat so far. So I'm going to um, just talk about some other sort of uh, general bits about the college, uh, if that's okay. Uh, what I'll do, I'm just going to turn your microphone off for a moment uh, just to, to take the, the feedback loop off. Uh, uh, but obviously, if you do still have questions that you'd like me to put to Michelle, please do put those in the chat because we can always come back. Uh, but just generally, um, just in case you, you, you don't know too much about the college, we have got two campuses, as Michelle has said. Uh, we've got a campus in Gillingham, that's our Medway campus. Uh, and we've got a campus in Maidstone, which is uh, up on the Tunbridge Road uh, up in the Oakwood Park Estate, uh, and our foundation education programs run from both of those campuses. Now, if you're looking to travel to us, there's lots of different ways that you can travel to us. Um, if you do choose to uh, walk, then we're about uh, five, 10 minutes uh, from the town centres uh, and, and the main mainland railway stations, actually. So about 10, five, 10, maybe 15 minute walk from the train stations. Um, we do have buses that stop immediately outside of both of our campuses as well. 
Uh, and obviously, we've got lots of drop off uh, and pick up zones on our campuses if you're being brought into the campus in the car. Um, Michelle's mentioned quite a lot of this already, so I'll, I'll scoot through it. But when a students come to us, uh, it's not just your main qualification. So, you know, your your technical qualification, your, your foundation education uh, qualification is one part of what you do with us. Michelle's already mentioned that we, we wrap support for your maths and English uh, around your time at the college as well. And that will be at a level that's appropriate um, to what you've achieved previously, as Michelle has said. Um, you spend some time out in industry placement or work experience to help you put the skills that you're learning uh, in college and in the classroom into practice in a real life environment. Uh, and Michelle's also mentioned personal tutors who are there to provide some of that uh, personal development support uh, and, and help you uh, deal with other things in your time at college and beyond. So, you know, those sessions with personal tutors could be welfare based, they could be mental health, it could be preparing you for an interview, it could be all sorts of things. Uh, but your time at college brings all four of those things together um, to prepare you for what comes next, whether that's progression into a higher level of education uh, or into employment. Uh, we talked to our course inquiries team earlier in the week and they asked us uh, about, uh, or sorry, I asked them about what are the most frequently asked questions you get asked. So I'm just going to tackle some of those here for you. Um, the first was how many days a week could, could I expect to be in college? Um, normally, if you are 16 to 18 and a full time student, uh, then uh, your, your normal working, your normal week at college would be sort of three, three and a half days on campus. Um, you know, Michelle's already mentioned the fact that coronavirus and uh, all of the changes that we've got in society around us at the moment impact on us as well. Uh, so it might be that from September things look slightly different and it might be that um, you'll you'll be on campus and you, you'll be coming in in smaller groups uh, but doing some work supported by your tutors and support staff from home as well. So um, we're finalising plans on that at the moment but our overwhelming priority is just to make sure that everybody's safe. Um, we've got 8,000 students that we work with and support. Um, we would love to have everybody back on campus with our staff uh, in classrooms and workshops, uh, but all the time we have to maintain social distancing regulations, that's really difficult for us to do. So we'll make the right decision in line with the advice that we get from government to keep everybody safe. Michelle's already talked about um, studying more than one subject, so I don't propose to, to go on with that. Um, we get asked about progression into university from college, and you know, if you progress all the way through to a level three program, uh, then those programs do uh, have UCAS points attributed to them. So there is a pathway there uh, to keep studying uh, beyond your time at college as well. Um, in terms of the different levels, um, you know, M Michelle's already mentioned foundation and level one. Um, so just to expand on that, uh, a level two uh, program is uh, broadly speaking equivalent to GCSEs and a level three is broadly equivalent to A-levels. Um, I think that the main thing to take away from today is that it's our responsibility and our job, um, as Michelle has already said, to make sure that we help students get onto the right program for them that meets their career aspirations, but also uh, at the right level as well. Well, so we can help you with that. Um, in terms of the cost of programs um, for 16 to 18 year olds, uh, uh, our programs are fully funded. Um, Michelle, I'm going to bring you back in here for a moment just because uh, I just need to clarify something if that's okay. So for adults uh, who are coming in at a foundation level, is, is there any concessions on fees that we should mention today as well? Um, if they've got an ECHP, um, then they will get their course um, as they normally would from a 16 to 18 year old. Um, but if they haven't got an ECHP, then I do believe they it is. Okay, course. that's brilliant. I thought that was the case, but I just wanted to check before I gave people yeah. the wrong information. So yeah. thank you. Um, there is some more information about student finance and financial support uh, on, on this uh, chat for you as well. So if you go to the right hand side of the screen uh, and scroll to the top, you'll see that there's uh, a tab called handouts. Uh, and in that, you'll find some uh, documents, uh, the, the frequently asked questions that we get about studying at college and college life. Um, there's a guide there of how to complete your application form as well. Uh, and there's a document that's all around student finance too. So um, feel free to download, that, that, that download those before you leave the call today. Um, and they're there to help you. Uh, and in terms of a deadline to apply, uh, we've been accepting applications for these programs since last November. Um, now, it's not 
impossible that we'll still accept people onto programs uh, up until the, up into the first couple of weeks of September. Uh, but obviously, that depends on places being available. So if you've made your decision about you want what you want to study, then my advice would be get your application in as soon as possible. Um, then you'll have uh, a telephone interview with Michelle or, or someone from Michelle's team uh, just to talk through what it is you want to achieve in your time at college. And that helps us to make sure that we've got you uh, on the right program. So uh, advice is to get those applications in as soon as you can. In terms of life at college, um, all I wanted to say uh, really at the moment is that we've got a brilliant student engagement team who work with our curriculum teams and our personal tutors uh, just to make sure that you've got loads of really uh, fun and enjoyable stuff to do around your studies at college as well. Uh, now, in a normal year, we would have um, pantomimes and shows that our performing arts students put on that you can go and see, uh, music performances from our music students, um, a whole host of fundraising activities, uh, which are, our students are brilliant. And I have to say, full credit to our foundation education students who are always way, uh, way up there in terms of uh, hitting fundraising targets for uh, charities as well. And our chosen charity for this year is the Air Ambulance Kent Surrey Sussex. Um, we They also, uh, as in the student engagement team, look after freshers fairs and all kinds of other fun events during the year. It might be again that because of coronavirus, we need to do things slightly differently. But, um, you know, the, I think that even if we're working within those guidelines, there'll still be lots of fun stuff for you to do uh, around your studies uh, while you're with us. There's lots of support available too. Um, so if you've been at the same same school for the last five or six years, you might find that uh, actually changing where you study and coming to a different environment is a bit of a nerve wracking thing for you. So we've got lots of support available. Michelle's already mentioned her team are brilliant at this uh, and have got uh, their own dedicated personal tutors to, to work with foundation students as well. Uh, but what we want to do is provide as much support as we can to help you make that change from uh, being at the school you've been in previously or wherever you've been previously to, to coming in and succeeding at the college. I've mentioned financial support already, and please do make sure you download that document, uh, which will take you through some of that. Uh, but we've got a brilliant student welfare team and counsellors as well who are there to, if you find that you're in a situation you need to speak to someone or need some support. Uh, we've got excellent support within our classrooms as well uh, and a careers advice team as well. So if you come to us and you're not too sure what, you, what your next step is when you leave college, um, the careers team are available to help you there too. We also have uh, a learning support team. Uh, so if you've got any additional needs, uh, then obviously our learning support team are there to provide uh, some uh, additional help for you as well. Uh, we did uh, talk to them about whether we run this kind of webinar with them as a team too, uh, but because, you know, the. the the likelihood is if you wanted to talk to them about the service that's available, you might need to tell them some quite personal information about yourself. So the chat window on this call would not be the place to do it. So if you do want to speak to them, uh, please go to the help and advice pages on our website and the link is there on the slide uh, and that, that will give you a phone number and an email address to go straight into that team. Just as we wrap up then, I think in terms of what ne what's next, if you haven't uh, completed your application yet, but you know you want to, a place for September, then head to the website and get your uh, application in as soon as you can. If you've got um, some predicted grades that, that you can use to help us make sure that you're right, at the right level, then please use those on your application form as well. Uh, and one final thing, which is that even after today, if you find that you need some extra help or you want some uh, advice about what you can do, um, then our course in inquiries team are there to help. So hayley has been looking after the chat today for us, um, but you can reach the course inquiries team on 01634 40 2020. If you'd rather speak to them through the uh, live chat service that we've got on our website, you can head to the website uh, and just click on the tab there to speak to them, or you can send an email to course.inquiries at midkent.ac.uk. So that's all we needed to cover today. So I'm really grateful for your time. Thank you for coming in and taking part in today's webinar. And thank you, Michelle, for giving up your time this afternoon to come and uh, speak to us and answer some questions as well. We really appreciate it. So I'll end the call now, but thank you all very much again for this afternoon. And we hope to see you in September. Thank you. Bye-bye.